Excellent. Okay, we're moving on to our second uh, new sentence for this week. So this is a very important type of sentence. It's called the list sentence. Now, quite often when we're presenting ideas, we'll need to uh, write a list to clarify what we're talking about. In particular, this type of sentence comes into play when we're writing thesis statements for our essays. So that's the reason why this sentence is being taught uh, in our current week, because as you know, very soon we'll be looking at how to write essays. And so we have to have a strong idea of how to present our ideas in a list. So let's begin. So this will be one of the main uses. And in fact, um, if you take the example of the semicolon sentence, there's a video uh, support video for that as well. If you take the semicolon sentence and you marry it together with a list sentence, that's essentially what the thesis is. Um, but, uh, but of course, as we continue to develop our awareness of sentence writing, we will have a specific support video for how to write a thesis uh, statement as well. But we should at least uh, underline that and highlight it because this is a very crucial idea. Um, and we'll be looking at that as the weeks roll forward. Okay, um, this sentence essentially presents a core idea and then lists examples or kind of categories that will be used to prove that concept. Um, now, there's a little bit of a debate in uh, English classes about how many commas you need in a list sentence. Um, classic list sentences will usually have three items in them, and that's because when you're setting up an essay, you will have three main body paragraphs. So each of the items of your list sentence would represent an introduction of the topic that you'll be talking about in one of your main body paragraphs. Um, so therefore, that, that classic three item list is the most common one that we see in these types of sentences. Now in the kind of prevailing wisdom of writing in America, you would only have one comma. Uh, if you were to follow the British system, uh, you would need two commas, and that's called the Oxford comma. Canada, we kind of see split down the middle. Um, so personally, for my class, I want to see the Oxford comma. Okay, so for, the, for this English course, you will be asked to utilize the Oxford comma rule, which states that a comma is needed between each list item. So Oxford comma. All right, so if, uh, I, I want to eat apples, bananas, and cherries. So if you were writing this sentence, uh, for an American source, if you were going to, you know, Stanford University or even the University of Michigan or something like that, or Harvard, for example, they would be kind of recommending that you remove this um, comma from the list, that you only need the first comma. Um, to me, that doesn't really make sense because then I think that you're talking about bananas and cherries as though they're one item in the list. So I'd be like trying to picture this. I'd be like, what if you mash the bananas and cherries together in a bowl or something? So in my opinion, and if you were going to Oxford University, that's kind of where this rule comes from. Um, we prefer to see uh, a comma between each of the items so that they're clearly separated. So I know how many different and unique items there are in our list. So that's essentially what we're looking for. So then let's check out the formula. So again, we've got uh, C1, and then we've got um, usually the plus list concept. And then the normal thing to do is to add a colon. And you have item one, comma, item two, comma, and item three. So let's do an example. Uh, 
uh, global, let's call it climate change. Climate change is causing global temperatures to rise, which creates, which is creating a number of issues. So you can see um, I've set up, this is the core idea right here. Um, sorry, it goes all the way down to rise. And then we've got this interesting clause, which is called a which clause. And we'll actually be looking at which sentences and that sentences um, as the week goes on. So for this is our this lesson, these two sentence types are connected to um, our first asynchronous uh, learning session this week. The second asynchronous learning session this week, we'll look at some more sentence types, of course, as we're going to keep building our kind of our repertoire. Um, so we can see that when we have a which clause uh, attached to a main idea, we always need a comma to come in front of it. Um, that's just a little bit of early learning. We'll see this again in another video um, in a few days. But now we can talk about the items that are issues connected to climate change and the rising of the, the, the increase of global temperature. So we could say glaciers melting, um, ocean levels um, rising. Uh, what else could we say? Increase uh, forest, forest fires increasing and ocean acidification um, skyrocketing. Add some kind of colorful language there. But what you'll notice is that this list has more than three items and that's totally okay as long as all of them are true, which we would want to then go ahead and prove with our research. Um, but you can see I've Im implemented the Oxford comma as well. I've made sure that um, there's, a, there's a comma here before our final item of the list. So the list starts with the colon, and then we've got item one, item two, item three, and item four. Okay. Now another interesting thing here that we can note is that all of the items in the above list are written in the same way. What I mean by that is, notice we have a, a noun and then we have uh, a verb in the in the continuous tense, uh, uh, talking about what's happening to the noun, right? So the glacier is the noun and the glaciers are melting. The ocean ocean levels is the noun here and the ocean levels are rising. Forest fires is the noun, they are increasing. Ocean acidification is the noun, and that is skyrocketing. So you'll notice that I didn't change the type of wording. I always have noun, and then I have verb in the ing form. Noun, and then I have verb in the ing form. And that's true for all four of the items in this list. So when we write lists consistently like this, we call it parallelism. Parallelism is an advanced um, writing concept, and if you don't follow parallelism, you can actually suffer a penalty in my writing class in, my, in, the, in on your writing assignments, and it would be called, uh, you know, a writing toolkit error, and it would be minus quarter point for parallel structure, right? So if I said, if I'd done this improperly and I'd put um, the words in the wrong order, for example, so I've I've ruined my order, right? I had noun. And then I had ing verb, I had noun, and then I had ing verb. Now suddenly, for some inexplicable reason, I've switched the order there. So I would then see this type of, uh, if I was, if I had written a sentence like this and my teacher had marked it, you would get a comment on the side. And by the way, this is how my marking looks. And it would say minus 0 0.5, 0 0.25. And it would say writer's toolkit, because it's something we've learned for our writing methods. And then it would say, parallel structure error, and then I might say something like this, be consistent with all of your list items, something like that. Now, in this case, obviously, I don't want to do that because I'm 
a good writer. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all these comments. And in fact, I'm going to switch that back because it just really bothers me. Um, I want everything to be consistent and I want my parallelism to be uh, dialed in tight. Okay, let's do one more sentence. One more example here. Okay, so again, we've got our, our hero Dagmar here. So Dagmar smashed through the enemy lines with his brilliant tactics. So now I'm going to list what those tactics are. So there's my colon. And remember, the colon kind of indicates here comes my list. Quick flanking, fearless charges, and superior training. So notice again, all of my, all of my um, list items are consistent, right? I've got an adjective and then a noun, I've got an adjective, and then a noun, I've got an adjective, and then a noun. So by the way, you'll also notice that words in the ing form often play different roles. So again, that's an issue of form and function. Um, in this case, when a word is turned into its ing form and it's acting as a noun, we call that a gerund. When a word is in the ing form and it's acting as a verb, it's a continuous verb. Uh, participle. So all of these words do have their own grammar um, kind of names that we can we can or titles that we can attach to them. But again, as I've mentioned, I don't like to get too detailed into the into the um, grammar terminology unless it benefits us. So we're just going to keep looking at our sentence formulas and trying to build our sentence writing strategies and then that'll balloon out into our paragraph writing strategies and then that'll balloon out into our essay writing strategies. Um, and we'll just keep looking at more of these quick videos. Um, so remember notes for this one, Oxford comma is needed. So you need this uh, comma between items two and three. Um, also, here's the formula. We start with our core concept that leads into our, sorry, our core clause that leads into our list concept. Then we use the colon to start the list. Then we have item one, comma, item two, comma, and item three. So let's just add one final note. Um, the colon, and that's this little guy here, marks the beginning of an academic list. Perfect. Wonderful. So part of your um, asynchronous study is going to be to try out these example sentences, watch the video, of course, take notes, and then you're going to try to make three examples of each of these new sentences that we've learned about.